All right, well, today I've got with me Philippe from Singing Revealed, and uh, he wants to introduce us to his uh, four activities of singing. Uh, today, focus on emotional layering, how to sing with real emotion. Now, this is something that, you know, it's a very difficult, it's, it's a very unique thing to talk about because layering, I love the, I love the idea of layering. Now, I already did an interview with Philippe. It's on his channel, Singing Revealed. So please um, go and check that out. That was an amazing interview we did. Where um, It was mostly Philippe asking me about my um, what I do in my teaching and also kind of casually conversing and going back and forth as to what we both do. And yeah, now we're going to do a similar sort of thing. So please um, check him out and his content. He's an amazing singer, amazing performer. I watched a few performances and I was just... Like, wow, you know, it's it's definitely things that I've never done. So it's it's a great to share a different kind of a, a take on singing and on approaches to teaching, etc. So yeah, um, Philippe, emotional layering, how to sing with real emotion. So what what made you, I know that this is a world first unique course. Right? What made you think of this? That's a great question. Um, first of all, I just want to say thanks for uh, this wonderful collaboration. And it is a pleasure getting to know you better. And I can just say to your fans and your following, your students, uh, you're very lucky to have Rashad. He's, he's just a great guy. He's passionate about what he does. And, and I really like what he's, what he's doing. And uh, so much uh, valuable input that um, I, I really agree on. And it's, it's great to have different ways of describing things, right? That's really valuable for, mm -hmm. for singers everywhere. Uh, because I've been through my journey. I've been a professional singer for 30 years, you know, over 30 years. It's kind of mind blowing. Wow. And looking back at all the things, all the things I've done, you know, and, and all the mistakes I've made. And also in singing, you know, how many times did I think I had it all figured out only to discover that I hadn't? <laughs> And, oh. and it was really sometimes a concept that I realized when it clicked, when the light bulb went on and I understood it, I realized what you know, the previous coaches had been trying to express, but the way it just wasn't working for me. So it really is an advantage to look into different approaches to, to, uh, to achieving the same goal, right? And basically, I think what every singer wants to do, you know, singer, we sing because we were inspired by somebody, you know, some yeah. artist, some live artist, or maybe it was just somebody picked up a guitar in a group and started singing and we felt something and that inspired us. And we wanted to, I think we want to feel that that's what we want to feel again. And then it goes on to, I want to make other people feel the same way. Maybe people don't mm. put it into those exact same words. Maybe the inspiration is stardom, you know, money, fame, yeah. whatever. But <laughs> at the same time, you have to realize that those, look, look, those people, <laughs> and I love the fact, okay, so we're, <laughs> we're doing this live and just at home and just casual. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got a little daughter. We're in different time zones. So my yeah. daughter just went to bed. Your yeah. daughter's just getting into her energy phase. <laughs> but even kids, kids are always experimenting with their voice. And at some point, we move out of that experiment, experimental phase. And we just start, you know, become more conscientious about things. Well, if we look at the reasons why we sing, I really feel like it's because we got inspired, we felt something, and we wanted to feel that again, and then we want to share that with other people. So whether your, your role models or the person that inspired you is someone you know, someone that is famous, someone you've heard that's you know, you know made a recording 40 years ago, something they did was they layered their voice with emotion and they were able to communicate to you and reach in and touch your heart and you felt that and that's powerful and this is why we sing why why do we sing you know i mean why not just talk we do talk all the time but singing is in its essence a different form of expression and it communicates differently so um when i was looking you asked me a question how did i come up with this um why did i decide 
to do this? Well, I was looking back, you know, it's a funny story, 12 years ago, I think, or 15 years ago, I was, you know, in the middle of my performing career and thinking, what am I going to do, you know, when suddenly, if suddenly the world shuts down and the theater shut down, and it kind of happened the last two years, didn't it? <laughs> when were you thinking it? Sorry? Like 12, 15 years ago, I was thinking ah. <laughs> about the long-term future. And I was thinking, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to contribute to society? Mm. And I decided right then that what I wanted to do was share my experience and my knowledge and help other singers. Because I had, I had learned a lot of painful mistakes. I'd always been in the business. I'd always been working. But, you know, it was, it's, it's tough to stay cutting edge it's tough to stay competitive you can't you can't dip down you have to keep going as a professional otherwise you'd kind of disappear like most artists do famous or not so famous so reflecting on all of this about two years ago when i started thinking about hmm what do i want to share with the world i was thinking about the th question i ask on on my live stream voice masters what does every singer need to know well there's a lot of little things <laughs> that singers need to know. So I, I looked at all the methodologies I'd studied and I just thought about, okay, what does a singer need to know? And I came up with four activities. One I call airflow control. Every singer needs to know that without airflow, there is no sound. And airflow is something you can learn to coordinate and regulate. And that is so key to your progression in singing. If you don't understand this, you will hit limitations. Guaranteed. It happened to me and I had to go back and relearn it. So I understand that this unlocks your progress, you know, so your progress doesn't have any roadblocks then. So that is one of the four activities of singing. And then dynamic movement potential. I, I've been on stage I don't know, around the world. I don't know how many theaters, uh, about 200 different theaters. And oh. all my professional colleagues, you know, we always talked about singing. And often, really quite frequently, there was a colleague that would say, oh, my jaw tension, you know, my jaw tension is acting up today. Or I've got bad tongue tension. Or they're talking about their tensions because it, it does affect your singing. You know, tight jaw and tight tongue is going to really limit your singing. But they were so hyper aware of that. And what happens when we become really hyper aware of something and focused in on something, whether it's bad or good, it gets we get more of it. <laughs> mm. So I was thinking about how do we solve tightness, tension and constriction? And I looked into my sports and dance background. I'm also a world champion Latin American dancer. That's in another lifetime. Oh, wow. I did a lot of dancing and worked as a professional dancer, done a lot of sports. And I looked at the evolution of sports and how muscles. I dance salsa, actually. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> salsa is great. Yeah. It's great fun. Cool. We have no. Do you mean like. Oh, yeah. What do you mean Latin American? Like. um. Latin American, like cha cha, rumba, samba. Yes, nice. Yeah. Like the more formal. Yeah, the, the, the formal competitive. Uh, oh, the competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, oh, incredible. Somebody's got, somebody's got something yummy. There. She's got an ice block. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I was looking at the difference between how athletes train today and how they trained when I was growing up. So when I was growing up, everybody stretch, 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 stretch your muscles. Now we know through science that that weakens the muscles. And today, all athletes across every sport, they train dynamically, meaning they move and strengthen their muscles and exercise their muscles in motion. And they're working against external force. Well, as singers, we're working against force, internal forces. And singing has to stay in motion. If singing, if activity stops, singing stops. So what is the opposite of tightness, tension, and constriction? It's dynamic muscle activity. You can't have one and the other. They're, they're polar opposites. It's really easy. You know, I, I show this example. If you clench your fist and you just move your arm, you've got your arm in motion, but you're using, you're flexing your biceps and your triceps. They have to be active. Well, that's really easy. But what about your fist? It's tight. It's static <laughs> contraction. So if a static contraction happens in the little muscles in our vocal tract, singing stops. This isn't really moving. <laughs> this is moving and it's active and exerting force. So all the little tiny muscles that move and shape our vocal tract, they've got to maintain their dynamic 
muscle activity or maintain their dynamic movement potential. So that's the second activity of singing. Sound design is another activity of singing. And this is one of the hallmarks of my career was that I have sung opera professionally as an opera soloist. I have been a musical soloist. I have sung uh, Freddie Mercury tributes. I have sung ABBA. I have sung jazz. I've wow. sung all really all kinds of different styles. I don't do R&B as well as you do. <laughs> that's a fact. Um, well, I can't do what you're doing. That's for sure. As a singer, I you know I I didn't develop um, that. Uh, level of finesse that you have with it. It's beautiful what you do. So, you. but the hallmark of my career was pretty much that I'm a crossover artist. And very early, I, it, I had this belief instilled into me that I could sing, you could sing anything with your voice. So I was thinking about writing a, a doctorate research paper on how this works. I decided not to do that and put my energy into making the course. But basically, mm. sound design is understanding my course i teach people how to understand the configuration i call it of above your vocal folds it's all about the shape that you use if you get the right shape you have the genre and the style so you are the sound mm -hmm. designer for your voice if you want to study r b it has very specific parameters yep. if you want death metal it has specific parameters if you want opera it's a sound design you know if you go if you want like a light uh, Billie Eilish sound, I'm a bad guy. Well, that's got a specific configuration. If you want a, an opera singer is going to go, I'm a bad guy. And that's just a different sound design. You know, and, and the rock singer is going to go, I'm, I'm a bad guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at the rock got, singer. Okay, okay. The death metal singer, I'm a bad guy. You know, you yeah. can do all these crazy things, but the fact is it's just a sound design. It's just a different sound design. If you understand those parameters and how to make it, you can do it. Of course, a big passion of mine is understanding how to do these things healthily. So mm -hmm. you have longevity in your singing. A lot of people hurt themselves based on bad information. So it's a big, big focus for me. So I've got, here we go, airflow control, dynamic movement potential, sound design that allows you to sing any style you want and then emotional layering emotional layering. why did i come up with this it's because it it made my career it made my career and it's it is a skill and i in the beginning i wasn't good at it you know i when i started studying i had a great voice teacher people used to call me the technician but they also called me the stiff technician <laughs> I would just stand there and sing. And I thought everything was about technique. So I, I'd worked really hard on my technique, but I had colleagues, they would get up and they just deliver this beautiful song. And I'm God, how long did you work on it? And you say, oh, I just improvised it. And I'm like, what, what? Oh my gosh, I don't get it. And he didn't improvise. He improvised what he was doing. <clears throat> But what he was doing is what he was, com he was communicating. He knew what he wanted to communicate. He knew how he wanted to communicate it. He knew how he felt about it. And that gave him the power to literally improvise anything. And in my performing <laughs> career, I've seen a lot of brilliant singers never work. This is a, this is a real life story I'm gonna tell with you, right? Okay, I'm gonna share with you. And yeah. then we'll talk about what emotional layering is. But I was at an audition for a big opera house in Germany. And, um, you know, as you do, you wait in the wings in the side in the hallway outside of the back of the theater. And you hear people sing, well, there's a couple of girls. And then I heard this guy, the most amazing voice. I mean, it was a beautiful tenor voice. I mean, literally, probably one of the best I've heard. And I was backstage, it was huge. It was like Pavarotti, Domingo, really amazing, amazing singer. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to get the job. <laughs> Right. I'm like, this guy's got a killer voice. And then I, I kind of walked up to the wings and I looked out and he was finishing and I and he walked back. But the he just walked back like this. It was so awkward and strange. And I knew right then, no matter how good he could sing, they could not put this person on a stage. Mm. It wasn't about the technique. It's never about perfect pitch. 
It's never about perfect technique. It's all about can you communicate with your audience? Can you touch their heart and make them feel something? So when I then I went out and I did my audition and, and I actually got the job, you know, even though I was in awe of this guy's voice, it was just so clear. So another thing that had changed was how do you get on a callback list if you're auditioning? I've been a musical director and I can tell you I'm every casting agent is listening and looking. They want to hire somebody. <laughs> We yeah. got to remember they're here, they're there to hire you, and if whether it's a producer looking at, for a new talent, you know, for in in the music industry, whether it doesn't matter, it they're there to hire somebody. What are they looking for? They're going to see a lot of nice voices. What you're looking for and what you remember is the person that comes in and shares something with you, shares a message with you that touches you and makes you feel something. Mm. When a when a singer comes in and does that you are looking so hard to give that person a job and the girl did that i remember to this day this was six years ago when i was a music director she came in most beautiful audition she just it wasn't perfect what she sang it was good but it wasn't perfect but it just was so touching she could mm -hmm. reach out and touch you with her voice because she was using the technique of emotional layering. And I looked so hard, I really wanted to give her a good job, but she didn't fit in any of the roles, mm. and which was frustrating. So, but anytime I saw that singer again, I was just waiting to give that singer a job. Does that make sense? So yeah, yeah. if you want to work in the they business- They stuck in your, yeah, on your list. <laughs> yeah, they're in your list, they're, they're on your list. If you want to work in the business, you need to do this. It doesn't matter if it's an audition for a show, a big label. It doesn't matter if it's just booking your, your gigs with your band or going out to sing. If you want to be invited back, this is something you have to do. And of course, it seems so logical, right? Everybody knows mm -hmm. a singer should communicate emotionally. Have you, I don't know if anybody's ever said to you personally, put some emotion in that or it needs oh. a little bit more emotion. Uh, maybe you're remembering what I said to you maybe a few weeks ago, <laughs> but um, definitely I got to sing for my idol, Wanye Morris from Boys to Men. And that was his advice, actually. He was like, there's something missing in the emotion. Your, your notes are right. Everything's right in, in respect of, you know, the theory or the technique of, of how you set, of how you um delivering the musical side of things, but I'm missing some emotion and, and, um, yeah, it really, it really hit me. I'm like, I'm not sure what to do with that. I've been thinking so long about getting my singing technically up to a level where I can copy certain level, a certain difficulty of uh, the kinds of songs I was singing, you know, certain kinds of runs, like getting the vibrato on point, staying like a uh, certain volumes or whatever, playing guitar at the same time, that the motion or the reason kind of just went to the side. Like it wasn't, you know, I uh, had to, I remember having to make a switch at one point, you know, where I just used to sing songs over and over and over and sing lots of songs and just having fun with songs and feeling them. And then I got to a point where I was like, but I don't sound like what I want to sound like uh, that good yet. Cause I was very amateur. Um, I need, I need to get the technical side, right. And then now I'm kind of like, okay, now the technical side is coming along. I've, I'm missing something on the performance side. There's something with the performance that's missing. Um, otherwise, why would I get that advice from someone like who he's similar to you who's been singing for like, you know, 30 years or something like that, you know? So, and, and he said it very, like, he really, he seemed to really think about it when he said it too. And he heard me sing twice as well, but two different songs he, to, to get a, a gist of it. Yeah. And I thought definitely I've been told that, um, yeah, I've been told that. And there's been times when, when it's when I've experienced someone being affected by my music, you know, and I was like, and I'm thinking back at it now. Like I remember uh, there was some girls that were like one girl was crying and I was singing um uh, with you with you by Chris Brown. And I was singing and playing, and I think, oh man, like sometimes I'm really into a song. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I really like convey it in a certain way. And it's like, yeah, learning how to do that. Every time you perform, it'd be really valuable. Uh, yeah, it's it's 
it is it is really the most important thing. We train technique to be able to do this effectively. I mean, I was I was told when I was a, a young mm. singer, put yeah, I don't buy that. I don't believe it. Put some emotion into it. I've had I've heard people say that to singers, mm. but wow. it's it's confusing. It's confusing when you're a singer and you hear that because nobody says how to do it. They just yeah. like put some emotion into it. Do you're it. like, okay, well, uh, uh, how am I going to do that? Right? It's and then we talk about performance. He's a great performer. She's a great performer. Well, what I want to convey to people is this is a skill you learn. It's not about, you know, all these fancy moves, physical moves, or all these perfect, amazing runs. That's all impressive. But at the end of the day, someone can come in, communicate emotionally, authentically, not sing as well, and they're going to walk home with a prize. It's just how it is. And, and you won't have anything against that person because you felt it too. So how do we do this? Right? It's so elemental. It's so powerful. It's so important. So I've got, I created a course and this course contains a lot of different acting techniques that I've used. And it contains also some uh, psychology and looking at subconscious programming. Because the fact is, the reason why we respond to this is because we are hardwired as human beings to respond to this. We, we recognize and feel physically frequency. We hear the notes, we hear our, each other's voices. We, we're in two different countries, right? And we're speaking the same language. But if you and I went to another country and we didn't speak the language, we would know if somebody was sad we would know if they were happy. We would know if they were angry. We would know if they were in danger. We would know if they were complaining, if, if they were um, chiding. We would know because of the frequencies we hear, the tone of voice. These are the emotional layers in the frequencies. Just like your daughter Just knows like that. that. She's learned how to recognize that from mom and dad. And we all know this. It's part of our biology. We're programmed. We're programmed to do this. So. That's why the response is so powerful. And there's even when you do this, you get a lot of different benefits. So first you get the benefit of your listeners. You're going to build your following much, much faster. You're going to get, you're going to book more gigs. People are going to invite you back more. You're going to win more competitions. You're going to get booked at auditions. You're going to be on the callback list. The list goes on and on and on about the benefits professionally. So let's just talk now about the benefits to you as a singer. Emotional layering techniques are very much like, I, I call it programming your mind for a response. And I love to say this, the statement that the brain only knows what we put in. Mm. The brain doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy. It only knows what we put in. Just a, a child that believes a story, Santa Claus. Santa Claus is real for that child <laughs> until they grow up, okay? It was, it was yeah. <laughs> very real for me. We can go through fables, all kinds of things. The facts mm -hmm. are the brain responds to the programming we put in. Yeah. So if we program the brain for an emotional response, it's going to come out. So that sounds technical. It's I've, I've got 14 different layering techniques. They're very straightforward. I'm just giving you some real, you know, science behind it this is a Do fact you mean program your own brain program that... your own brain yeah oh yeah yeah the okay. right information so you've got to mm. learn in the course i teach you how to learn how to ask the right questions and mm. how to follow those questions and build details so if you imagine a white room we'll just do a quick exercise yeah. if you imagine a white room now imagine there's a, a red desk now imagine there's a green flower on the desk and it's, it's uh, now imagine a vase full of roses. Now imagine what a rose smells like. Now imagine a window on a spring day that's slightly open with a, with a curtain that's lightly blowing fresh air in, fresh breeze from the ocean and the scent of the rose. And now you touch the rose and what does a rose feel like? Suddenly now this empty room is becoming very real to your mind. Wow. Yeah. And you, you have smell, you have senses, and you can hear maybe the seagulls and the waves crashing. Now you, this empty space is becoming real to your mind. 
So you're associating with it. Now we start putting people into it. So by this is what I mean by programming your brain with um, with information that will automatically trigger an emotional response. What this does is it allows you to communicate authentically. Okay, so if if we're going to sing a note, Pavarotti used to say, all the singer needs to learn to do is go, oh, <laughs> they're singing right there, you know, and people like what? But <laughs> it's, you know, it's a big sigh, really. Mm. Um, but let's, <laughs> it sounds very simplistic. Okay, but if, if I'm going to communicate with you, and I'm going to communicate, I'm angry about this experience in the song, in the verse, how am I going to communicate anger? Mm. I can fake the sound. This was the worst day of my life. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's there. Now let's start programming the brain with details. Okay. Just like I'm the white room that you start feeling with details. What's the experience? Who was involved? How did it affect you personally, emotionally, financially? Did it affect other people? Did you go hungry? You know, did you go cold? Was it hot that day? You know, all, all these little details that you program the situation with will trigger a reaction in your brain. And suddenly this sound is going to become more and more authentic and not just authentic and layered with real emotion. It's going to be original because this is, this is a big part of vocal identity. You know, vocal identity is you. You know, no two brains think or experience have this. Ex we could be identical twins, have experienced almost everything identical in our life, and still we would have very unique personal thoughts about each of those things. So by really activating your personal activating your personal thought process and programming your brain, you respond differently than I would to a certain situation. You may be very calm as an individual. I might be very loud and boisterous. I might react quick. So every person has their own individual responses. So when you get into activating real emotion in your personal brain, now you are reacting in your complete original authentic way and that's going into your sound and nobody can ever copy that right. so it's real vocal wow. identity you know and of course then you, you might become famous for that sound and then you might have mm. to learn how to reproduce it well that's the skill of emotional layering that's the skill we can use and another one of the emotional layering techniques that's really fun and I'm going to go into the psychology side is there's a, a, a Dr. Paul Ekman. He traveled the world for like 40 years and researched in, in big metropolitans and in Papua New Guinea, not far from you and uh, well, far enough, but closer to you than to me wow, and the remote tribes. And he was looking for what, how are there some basic levels of communication? He found out that mm -hmm. in the face, in the facial expression, there are specific facial expressions that are universal to human beings. Mm. It doesn't matter where you go. And there are physical markers of these facial expressions. So this is a fun example. Um, you tell me which of these smiles I'm going to give you and your, your audience. I'm going to give you uh, a couple smiles. And you tell me which one is a real smile. <laughs> Oh, that very end there. Yeah, the very end one is I'm using physical <clears throat> markers. So if mm. you want to fake a real smile on your picture, <laughs> <laughs> or you, these are the physical markers, you've got to raise your cheeks, squint your eyes a little bit and just mm. smile big. Yeah, wow. So I can do a big smile. Let's let's take out some of the markers. Here's a big smile. Yeah, looks totally fake that nothing's yeah. going on in the eyes. Now let's try and smile it and squint the eyes, but not raise your cheeks. Mm. Doesn't look natural, yeah, does wow. it? So that's just one example of these facial uh, markers and facial expressions. Now, what's really fun, and I'll show you how to do this in the course, is using one of these facial expressions in your music. You know, you're plotting it out. This is what this is the, the expression of my emotion that I want to communicate. Now, here's the science behind it. When you make 
a real smile. If you hold that physical marker, those physical markers, your brain turns on the happy chemicals. <laughs> Whether you mm. want to or not, wow. it's tied to physical markers. And anybody watching you and seeing you activate those physical markers, their brain starts turning on the happy chemicals. Wow. Isn't that insane? Is that, is that why, like, as performers, you know, no matter what we're going through, when we have to do a performance, we know how to, the, the people can't tell, you know, like if you're, how you're feeling or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like they can't, is, is that's like part of the reason why, oh, okay. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. That would, that would indicate that you, when you're having a bad day, your technique and your performance is solid enough that you yeah. are, you are giving enough of the sound layers your process is active enough and your physical markers are clear enough that nobody will notice. Yeah. I like it. They'll also experience it like how you're intending them to experience it just right. because you switched it on. Cause you know, especially like, when we, cause when we do, you know, videos like YouTube and all that kind of stuff, I always thought about it. I'm like, like, um, am I acting sometimes? Do you know what I mean? You know, when I, when I'm, when I'm videoing myself, am I switching to a, I'm like, but I have to, like, yeah. that's what I would do if someone walked in the room and I was about to talk to them or was about to teach them or I was about to greet them. I would, I would switch. I wouldn't just be like, Hey, or like if that, if that was where I was when, before they came in, maybe I was just like on neutral. Yeah. <laughs> like I might've been on neutral. I was like, no, like I change. And I think when I see people like maybe, you know, in different circumstances, I'm like, Oh, that person doesn't smile when they see you. They might raise their eyebrows or they might say hi with their mouth, but they don't raise their, they don't do any of the other things. I'm like, huh? Like when I see someone, I like smile, even if I don't feel that much like it, it's like some, some things more, like more practiced, I guess, or more, and people, people have different levels of what they like to do, you know, when they, it's just, I just find it, find it interesting. Can I go? I was thinking of one thing, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's a little to the earlier thing. Um, I experienced this, you know, when we hear music, but you don't watch the performer. Like, for example, you know, we hear, like, mm -hmm. I, I hear an MP3, I hear a stream, I, I hear a CD. And then when I would see, for example, um, sometimes I'll see a video, not even live or anything, like a video of the person, I'll see them singing the same thing. And I'm like, whoa, like that really hit my goosebumps. You know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll like tear, I'll get a cry. Or, like, whoa, I'm so emotional when I'm watching that person. I, I felt it when I listened to, listened to it purely listening. But when I saw it as well, I was like, whoa, it really hit me too. Like, like if it's, let's say a scale, <laughs> no pun intended, it hit me more, you know? Yes. And um, so, so is that like tied in all the, is it, is it to do with the, the cues and stuff like what you're saying? Well, I'm just going to say, yes. I mean, there's more a, information being fed to me. Could, <laughs> it could be that you, you personally are visually very uh, visual. You, uh, you visual is very important to your world. So that's a, a stronger element. Maybe. Mm. It but, just added to it. Yeah, it didn't like well, it. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's just put it in the, the, in, in the perspective of what I'm saying, emotional yeah. layering. So yes, it's just another layer of communication. Yeah. So you liked the song before it moved you, but when you had that visual layer on top of it, it, mm. it was more powerful. Yeah. So another thing, funny thing to think about is, this isn't, this isn't, this is science and big, big corporations use this. Okay. Why are people that work on the phone and even in a, in a doctor's office, why are they trained to smile when they speak on the phone? Oh, really? Wow. Because you can hear it you <laughs> can hear if that person is happy, you can hear the pleasantness mm -hmm. in their voice. So let's, so we've got the physical markers, the visualization, yep. that's a, an emotional layering technique. The other layering benefit it is it turns on the chemicals in your brain that goes into your sound. Also, it affects your sound design. This mouth opening is very different 
than an angry mouth opening. Yeah. So the shape, it, it forms your sound. All these yes. layers mm -hmm. together, that layers your sound with powerful communication. And that's what I want to teach for singers. And that's why I created the course because it's, it's, it's astonishing. It's astonishing that every singer is expected to do this, but there's not a tool for them out there. So mm -hmm. every one of these layers in the course is powerful layering techniques, I call them, they're powerful on their own. And I give you a worksheet for each layering technique. So on its own, it's going to change. What I'd like to talk about once again is how this ties into your subconscious instinctual knowledge of how to make sound. So we all know, we all know this, this example I'm about to give. If you want to sing rock and do a rock scream and you just go for it in the song, it usually doesn't work out so well, <laughs> at least not in the beginning, right? But if you are, are frustrated, somebody runs, just slams into your parked car or hits you on a bicycle and you get up and you just scream, does your voice ever hurt after that? Almost never, right? It, that primal scream. So mm. the body and the brain understand our vocal instrument. They know mm. exactly every sound, R&B, opera, country, rock, whatever our voice is capable of, the brain subconsciously knows exactly how to make that sound. And you're, you're a professional coach and you're a professional singer. So you know, as well as I do, that most of the time <laughs> we're working with singers to, to get them to stop trying to sing and start trying to make efficient sounds. You know, that sounds so stupid, but it happens, it happens all the time. And I was trying to sing for too long, right? We, there's some weird switch we flip on and, and we go yeah, away from I'm what's singing natural. now. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm in the singing zone. I'm going to do something yeah. what I'd never do in real life, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is the advantage when you turn on these emotional layers, you connect deep mm. to your subconscious instinctual know-how of how to produce sound so your singing improves and i everything about your singing improves and it doesn't matter what style i've got a, a great example a couple examples um on this but one that i've experienced personally i was doing my master's degree in, in a conservatory in germany which i'm very very fortunate to have been accepted to um and I had to audition, you know, the funny story. It's like that song, New York, if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere, right? It's up to you. Well, nowadays, it's, it's not really New York. If you go to Germany and you try and get into a conservatory for classical singing and you try and get into the opera business in Germany, well, guess, guess what? The entire world goes to Germany because they have 86 professional opera houses. So wow. Russia, Australia, you know, Korea, China, South Africa, Africa, America, South America, everybody's there. So it's tough competition. And I was at this, at this conservatory and the, the head of the department of voice performance studies was a professional director. He directed opera, theater, and in all of his master classes, and I watched him work with singers from all kinds of different countries, right? He doesn't know a thing about vocal technique. I literally doesn't know a thing, but he coached them with acting techniques, with emotional layering techniques, and I watched them sing better. Hmm. It's kind of mind blowing. They all sang better. He never talked to them about singing once, but he got them to activate emotionally and mm. that know-how, that subconscious know-how translated into more volume, hitting their high notes well, singing a longer phrase, amazing pianissimo, legato, everything. And I worked with him as well and it just things got so much better, you know. There are some things that you do have to work on your technique. This isn't going to solve all your technical issues. What it's going to do is it's going to take you to the next level quickly, okay. no matter what level you're at right now. And it's so that is a super powerful. It's another benefit. layer. <laughs> yeah, emotional layering. Another it's layer. not just for your listeners. It's yeah. going to make you sing better because you body 
works a certain way. And when you try and express yourself authentically, everything just clicks into place. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So you can tell I, I love this subject. Yeah, no, thank you but, so much. It's been amazing so far. Yeah. <laughs> so in the course, I've done this to um, part of the course, I wanted to have, I wanted to share with singers this process. So every layering technique, I have a couple um, coaching hours where I coach a singer on that technique, just on that technique. And I'll show you the before, then I'll show you the after, and then I'll show you the process. Mm -hmm. So you can actually watch, you can hear the difference right in the beginning, and then you can watch how, how we got there. Mm. And so it's kind of a master class, a couple of master classes are built in there. And then this once, is in the course. Yeah, this is in the course. Yeah, oh, that's a great idea. So yeah. it's uh, people have really, really responded well to that. And mm. I think it's just important. I love before afters. I love before afters. Yeah. <laughs> and I want I wanted people to. And the interesting thing is, and this I haven't I haven't, uh, you know, the, these are always a work in progress. So that's what I'm working on now to to put a couple, you know, the icing on the on the cake, on the course cake is now I've got a couple singers I've gone through the entire system with the entire course with, and then I'm going to put the first one and then I'm going to put a live performance of them doing that same song. And yes. I just nice. had a client do that. Um, and it's, it's like mind blowing. It's wow. mind blowing. So you, and what, what is key about this is, um, I don't talk about vocal technique in these coaching sessions, not at all. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's the proof that just working with emotional layering improves your singing all mm. by itself, which is pretty cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward I, to getting into it. Yeah, let me know um, if you have, do you have any other questions about emotional layering? Yeah, so um, uh, what, what sort of stage would a singer be at when they do this? It can be from complete beginner, it doesn't really matter. Any, any level so. yeah I because it's so, not yeah. really vocal technique so it's not not really prerequisite prerequisite is it right i like yeah. i use this example uh frequently if if uh if i am normal joe and you are a, a marathon runner or a sprinter let's say you're a sprinter professional sprinter i'm just a guy that likes to play basketball <laughs> as a hobby and we're both you know walking through the woods and a predatory animal like a bear or a, a, a big cat comes out. And are we both going to start running? Absolutely. You know, if, it's, if it runs towards us, we're going to start running, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, you as the sprinter are going to run faster. <laughs> I'm going to be running faster than I have in my life. But you're, as a sprinter that's working on sprinting all the time, you're going to run faster. So... Yeah. Yes, it works for beginners and advanced singers, but obviously the better your technique, the better oh, yeah, your yeah. emotional layer it's going to be. Yeah, of course. You've just trained it. It's there. You have to train your technique, but emotional layering will take your singing at whatever level you're at instinctively yeah, yeah. to a next to the next level. And it's a skill you learn, a skill you get better at, and that's what I, that's really important to communicate. You know, yes, you're going to experience quick improvement but refining this skill takes repetition yeah you know you're yeah. just going to get better at it and then it's just going to become a part of your process yeah. and and you will be aware of that so i think it's it's i've i've worked and i do work with absolute beginners even some examples in the course and then some more advanced singers so it doesn't matter your level if you're an amazing technical singer as as we've talked about that has a hollowness to its sound and it, it it has a hollowness to it it doesn't reach you you've got yeah. to have the emotional and the emotions in there and it doesn't work you can't fake it right we all yeah. know every human being across the world knows if you're faking an emotion <laughs> right we all know it so the word i'm talking about in emotional layering in this course is teaching you how to turn on real emotions mm. in your brain because your brain literally is the only thing that can put emotional frequency into your voice mm. it's too subtle you know imagine mm. you and i were playing a ukulele 
okay? Now imagine a giant that's 30 feet tall. We give him the ukulele and ask him to play. It, it's not going to work. And that's kind of how it is with us. If we try and control our voice, all these little things, you know, imagine you had to stretch your vocal folds and tilt your larynx and, you know, and then, you know, move the air at the same time and spread up here and get the tongue in the right position. We are so awkward. We would never in a million years manage to play our voice as an instrument. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's too small you know it's too small and there's too many things going on so yeah. the only thing that control it is that can control it is our thoughts so if we're not thinking and feeling emotion no. it won't be in the voice yeah, yeah. wow you've given uh you given me a lot to think about um it's your your energy is infectious your emotional energy um yeah, I've, I really, I really felt uh, everything you're saying, and it's, uh, it, it feels very exciting uh, to be able to um, look at another very important aspect of singing on top of you know just uh, getting the notes right, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, that that um, that I do, I tend to focus on a lot, you know. Um, uh, yeah, so. How long do you feel like it uh, takes a singer to master something like this? Is this something that will sp they need to spend a hundred hours of work on? Do you know what I mean? Like personal, you know, you said repetitions. Is yeah. it like, would you say, you know, if someone spent like a half hour a day on it, you know, in a year or two, they could get somewhere? Or is it like something that you feel it's like a, you do reps, but you kind of tap into it quick. Is it a long game or is it a short game? What do you think? Oh, it's a great question. So, you know, when you when we use the word mastery, right, anybody that's mastered anything, you know, we have that, they throw that 10,000 hour rule mm. out there, right? So, we've got to make a difference between mastery and, and um, results. Mm. Yep. You're going to get immediate results with this course. So, you are going to go through one yeah. layer at a time. And just by working with that one layer, if you if you spend a half an hour, you on just a half an hour a day, five days a week for two years, using this course, oh my gosh, it would be mind blowing the transformation. But singers don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Singers don't yeah. want to do it. We we want to spend our time on technique, and that's important. Okay, so yeah. we shouldn't neglect the technique. But. Yeah you're going to see immediate results. And that's why I put those videos in there because yeah. it's immediate. It's yeah, immediate it's, results, but mastering, feel, yeah. The, yeah, mastering the craft is going to take time, but you will accelerate just like you're going to feel about. it. Yeah. Compound interest. Yeah. Last in our last video. Yeah. And you guys should go watch that on, um, on singing revealed channel. We talked about, um, Philippe's, uh, very cool idea of compounding interest talking about how you gradually, um, build to a point where it feels all like it's getting faster is that right yeah i just exactly. butchered your explanation yeah <laughs> like your level of learning yeah yeah but yeah as in you're gonna feel it as in yeah it takes time to be a master at this skill but it is something that you will gradually you you feel motivated because you're going to be seeing the results every time you're participating in the course every time you're putting in a practice yeah totally and it's true i've got um also want to point out part of the course is I do a master class with everybody that owns the course and is working with it. I do a, a free master class every month for, for, for course users where oh, wow. I work with, with um, singers. Oh, and that's great. So I actually looking this... after people. It's not just by the course and see you later as well. Yeah, yeah it's important. Yeah. You know, knowledge and skills. Not that's bad, but yeah. yeah. But another thing is uh, you can ask the, the uh, another thing I like about the build of the course, you know, I use a, a platform uh, to build the course is they have a, they have a, feedback and question answer field in every every section of the course. So if you have a question, I have people just ask me a question in the course That's and great. I can yeah. respond. And then I save the responses and the questions in the course. So it's kind of like the mm. FAQ of the yeah. course. Excellent. Yeah. It's really little, cool. It's always little things that come up hey, in videos. Yeah. Yeah. I had awesome. this, uh, this singer send me a video. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, yeah, he sent me a video. He was so excited. He'd just been working with it. And he was so excited about this song. He was working on This Is The Moment from Jacqueline Hyde. 
And uh, oh my gosh, he showed me his before after. Just he couldn't believe it. And he's he was he's absolutely a beginning singer, but the, the, it's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. It, like a lot of the technical tension and constriction goes away because now you're yeah. not trying to sing, you're trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really um, amazing. I I have um, I believe every singer should know how to do this. So you are you are very right in your um, honesty and openness with your singers and with your audience that this is a journey you know mm. we can't expect to be a master singer in in you know a few months it's not going to happen yeah. we would be lying if we said that if you want to become an emotional layering master well look at all the big stars that's what they do look yeah. at all the actors that you love look at the real the real stars that last that's what they do and they didn't just you know do that out of nowhere they learned how to do this and now now i'm sharing their techniques that that gave me a career and helped me be on the callback list in the last 15 years of auditioning there are two times I was not on the callback list twice. Wow. And before then, <laughs> what a it, it was about, you know, it wasn't quite that good, you know, <laughs> because I wasn't, okay, I yeah. wasn't using emotional layering. I didn't realize until I realized how to use this. And I, the reason I explained, because I've been on the other side of the desk, right? It's because when somebody does that, you are trying to hire them. Mm -hmm. And even if the callback gets to the final round and you don't get the job, you got that far and you left an impression take this and put it into now i'm gigging and i'm playing at whatever wherever you play at different venues well if you do a good job and and the people like you and they feel it and that you're going to get booked again and you're, it's just going to spread yeah. one of my colleagues um his name's uh, I'll, I'll just throw his name out there uh marvin smith he i met him when he was uh co-directing, choreographing West Side Story. And he tried for years. He's, he's an amazing choreographer, okay? He's worked with Madonna, Shania Twain, tons of big oh. names, tons of big names. But he, he we, we met and we talked, I don't know, I think it was about four or five years ago. We were talking about things and he just said, places that wouldn't give me the time of day now drop everything when I call and say I'm in town. <laughs> wow. There's a there's a difference. So that didn't that didn't happen for him overnight. You know, he he worked on it. So getting to this level of mastery is going to take time, but you're going to get immediate results, immediate results. And he now what he does is he helps artists and bands to work on their image and find out who they are and their identity and mm. uh, he it's he's very clear about it he says it doesn't matter it doesn't matter your skill level it's not about technique and skill level okay it is up to a certain point yeah right? yeah but but there's too it's many, a part of the puzzle sort of thing yeah there the are literally thousands and thousands of amazing voices that can sing technically great but the difference maker is something else and that's what i call emotional layering it's the mm -hmm. ability to connect with your listeners and communicate an authentic pure emotional message heart to heart that's going to make them feel and you're going to inspire them i don't know probably let's see it i don't want to go over time too much but i want to share this right right on here yeah. you need to realize that your job as a singer you are a storyteller and you are telling a story. This is fascinating. You need to commune. You need to know the story that you're telling in your head. Okay. And it activate the emotion in your mind that comes through in your voice and enables you to sing better. Free tension, open up, you know, have better lines, technically clean, amazing improvisation. It all comes from that that from your mind okay when you've done this this is the fascinating part it doesn't matter what you are thinking because your listener now you have taken them on a journey and their mind is piecing together its own puzzle pieces 
and the journey your listener goes on may be similar, but it's never going to be what you are experiencing in your mind. So the story you're telling is really you're telling your story. What your listeners do with it depends on their personal background. But the connection to inspire them to go on that journey and think, that's what a storyteller does. And that's when somebody comes up to you like you shared and said, you saw, you saw a lady crying, you saw somebody may be inspired, and some mm. people come up to you after you're singing and said, thank you so much, that song made me remember this, or made me yeah. think of this person in my life. So you took them on their own personal journey while you were going on yours. Mm. It's, pretty, it's pretty crazy, yeah. huh? But it's important because people are looking as they go through these emotional layering techniques, they're looking for the right answers. They're looking for, well, in the show or the original artist did it that way. I'm saying no. It's not about what anybody else thinks. It's about your decisions, your personal journey mm. is what's going to activate the emotion in your mind. Nobody else ever needs to know what that is. Mm. You can tell them, but they don't need to know and your listeners don't need to know. And it reminds me of when sometimes when I watch artist interviews and they ask them what a song was about mm -hmm. and then it's like nothing that you thought of, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh man, I was painting this different story when I'm listening to that song, like my own story, like you're so right. You know, you're thinking you, you are taking the feeling that they're giving and then you're applying your own. Is that what you mean? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, go on this journey. It feels like this. And <laughs> you know, let me tell yeah, uh, I love that. Great. It, it is well, crazy when when you find out that the inspiration or what an artist is singing about has is nothing like the journey that song took you on. Yeah. And that's what I want to try and communicate here. It doesn't matter. Mm. You you went on a journey. That's the yes. most important part. Yeah. It doesn't sometimes hey, you find yourself so moved sometimes when someone's telling their story in a song and it's like extremely moving. Even though it's never like some some songs I've heard about death, you know I didn't really hadn't experienced death in my families or anything, and I and I whoa man that like moves me so much. I've never I never experienced it, but it's like that person's feelings just came right into me, mm. you know. And then I maybe painted my own picture of someone possibly dying or or thinking of an artist how the artist felt. It's like I felt it deep. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that, for me, that's, that's what I started to sing. That's why I started to become a, a professional singer and got into the business. It, it was really because I wanted, I wanted to communicate that way. I wanted other people, I wanted to share that with other people. Um, it's, it's fascinating progress. It's been a long journey. Just to, to recap, Sorry, she's singing. That's no, good. It's good. Oh, cute. She's on going on her journey, right? Yeah. So very cute. And the, and experimenting with her voice as she should, you know. And all children do that, and we just stop at one point. We should just keep going. Mm. Um, basically, I just want to communicate to your audience and to singers everywhere. I was not good at this. Mm. You know, I was not good at this in the beginning. <laughs> This is a skill you can learn. The belief that it's something that you can't learn is, is a myth, mm. you know, that you're either a performer or you're not. No, it's, yeah. it's not true. You can learn how to do this and it, it doesn't take as long as you may think. You get immediate results. It takes time to be great at anything. But this is the most important factor in your singing and I know it, it will help singers everywhere. I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak about it and share it with singers anywhere, everywhere. Um, I'm going to make sure that we put, uh, that I pass on to you, Rashad, a nice yeah. little private link for, for your following. So we give them a nice yes. uh, rebate or a coupon, whatever you want to call it. They'll save some money. And you'll get a little bit more discount than anywhere else on our on, yeah. our, on our page. So it's oh. kind of going to be a private insider or a shed Hayek yeah. following. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, they'll they definitely be in the description um, of the video and stuff for, for people who are interested to check out 
um, Philippe's emotional layering course in much more detail. Um, I feel like uh, you've given an amazing amount of value in this hour. So thanks very much for that. You're an excellent speaker and your energy is it's very infectious. And, um, and you answered all my questions really nicely as well. And yeah, I'm excited to, um, to delve in and learn, learn more about emotional layering.